Welcome back guys, James from Discord here again and on this part we are going to cover side chaining. Now I'm sure you've heard of side chaining, whether you know what, is, what it is or not, uh, I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, it's really really important in dance music these days, whether as an effect or as a, um, a, a method to help towards getting your mix really punchy and loud. Um, Basically, what it is, is sending a signal from, let's say, the kick drum um, into a compressor on another channel, which then ducks the volume whenever that, that kick plays. Uh, that's, the most, that's the most sort of um, obvious use of it, is kick and snare, side-chaining side maybe your synths or your bass hits, whatever it might be. Um, and what it does is it, it, that enables you to if you're if everything is more or less everything is dropping in volume when the kick and the snare plays, then the kick and the snare are going to be really clear in the mix for a start. And also you're not going to keep needing to turn them up, um, which then overall means that you're that you can turn the whole mix up. The whole mix can get louder um, without, you know, without clipping, without anything like that, because you, the kick and snare aren't constantly battling for space with the rest of the track. Because um, obviously the kick and snare are, you know, the driving force of the track in, in a trap um, a trap or dubstep track. You know, in, in, in house or trance, it's more just the kick. Um, but anyway, so you, could, you can be kind of pretty aggressive. You can be just just using it for, a, a, you know, a slight, a, a small amount of it just to... to duck that volume and let you get a little bit more headroom on your master um but so what we do is we side chain to the kick and snare now we there's a million different ways of doing side chaining these days um but we like to do it with the just the built-in ableton compressor we actually use um the ableton 8 compressor which you can get it's uh you can you can just download it um if you've got ableton so it's uh the reason we do that is because it's got a mode on it so i'm just going to jump onto the synths group here because we're going to do that first so i'm just going to load a compressor now like i was talking about way back in one of the earlier videos it's well worth setting up your default settings on on the stock plugins so our, our, this is all we really use this side this uh, compressor for is side chaining so it's automatically set to a sidechain preset so full ratio um, and it's got the sidechain turned on also all I need to do to begin with is select my sidechain source so it's going to be the kick so luckily the kick and snare right at the top uh, easily labeled and then the threshold is basically uh, 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 Is essentially how far over this line does it need to get, or, or how loud does it need to get before the compressor starts side chaining? So if it's right down the bottom, basically as soon as it hears any sound from that that input, it's going to start side chaining. Um, and then you've got your attack and release. So your attack is um, how quickly it starts doing it, and your release is how long it takes to stop doing it once the sound's finished. Um, so at the most basic level, if I just do one, I'll do one for the snare kick and one for the snare. So I'm just going to copy that one over there and put it on snare. So, and just put it on complete and utter devastation. Oh, I should probably get to something where there's actually something in the synth group playing, eh? So. So you hear how that ducking every time the, the kick plays now. So that's, you know, to be honest, that doesn't sound that half bad already. Um, it's maybe a little bit too uh, long on the release. Now what, what we quite often do is use this EQ here so that it only actually listens to a specific part of the sound. So you can filter out all the low 
and now with a, with a high pass here so that it's only only actually listening to the high frequencies of the kick drum so that's going to be a lot quicker that, see how that line takes a lot longer to uh get back up the top that's gain reduction there so uh, when it's full down here it's literally muting the sound and then when it gets back up to here it's at zero again so that takes a lot longer to get up back up like that than it does if i turn the eq on Actually, it's not that much maybe i need to go higher there you go so that's that's starting to work now so because obviously a kick's got a lot more low end than it has high end the high end is over quicker see that so that's super punchy That works. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, so that's a good place to start from for the side chaining. Um, what we'll probably end up doing is just you get two you know, kick and snare settings that you're happy with. Then we just copy them to each group um, and then you know tweak them to fit basically. Um, so we side chain side chain things as groups. Um, so many good reasons for putting stuff into groups. Uh, apart from anything else, it makes it so much easier to look at and to know what you're doing. Um, and then also, so now I don't need to sidechain every single one of these tracks se se separately. I just, you know, I sidechain the group and they'll all get sidechained exactly the same. Um, and then, you know, and then repeat that on the bass hits. Um, so let's actually do the vocal chop next because I want to I wanna get the snare side chaining right and there's nothing really playing with the snare in the synth group so let's move on to the drop uh, i'm just gonna copy these to the vocal chop group so there you go that, now you can see that side chaining to the snare Really all I'm doing here is just tweaking it until it sounds like I like it. Um, and that's gonna be, you know, your 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 taste will come in here. So you might want it way more aggressive than I do, or you might want it way less aggressive than I do. Um, that's gonna be your you know, your yours to experiment with. sounds pretty good to me so what I'm gonna do now is I'm literally just gonna copy those settings to the synths and to the bass hits so you can just select them both and then um, hold alt or option and drag them onto another group You, you can just hear that the drums, the, the kick and the snare particularly, are just way more upfront in the mix now. They're really like slapping you in the face every time the kick and the snare plays. Um, and that's what you want. You want the kick and the snare to be really powerful. reason I'll just go quickly go back to why we use the live 8 compressor the reason for that is um, there's probably nothing here that will really demonstrate it maybe the bass in this section 
So what it is, it comes down to clicking, basically. Um, with the, let me just copy that there. And I'll hit upgrade. So this would switch it to the Live 9 compressor. So I'm not, I don't know if this is going to really demonstrate it. If it doesn't, it's going to be a bit of a failure. But... So you hear that kind of distortion that it's creating? Compare that to this one. Super clean. Um, basically, this adds, it just doesn't, it, it, we, we're always using it on zero release, essentially, or, or you know, one, one millisecond release. So, because we want it to just be super punchy. So when you do that on the Live 9 compressor, you get clicks, more clicks and pops, you get distortion. Sometimes that actually sounds great on a synth group. If you want it to sound super gritty, um, every time the kick plays, it distorts a little bit. That can work. But it's not it's not for every track and it's not for everyone's taste so um yeah so we stick with the live 8 compressor and it just it works like a dream um one other thing just to cover quickly i i'm not a fan of generally things like kickstart and um anything that uh, lfo tool does it as well but you can trigger it by midi but anything that just um, is on a 4-4 four four, so it just it side chains every beat so that can work in a house track um, when the kicks playing every beat but if you if you were to do it in a track like this so when the drums play there's empty spaces where it will still get side chained and this is just a personal taste thing for me and some people might love it and that's why they do it but for me personally I think it should only be side chained when something is there to side chain it because otherwise it just it's just like dead space um there's no reason for a sound to be side chained if there's not anything there to side chain it from if that makes any sense at all so that's that's the way i see it that's my personal <laughs> my two cents on the subject um but yeah that's the basics of side chaining um that was super like i say that was that was a really quick run through of it you know we've just um basically copied the same settings to all the main groups on here um, but it sounds great like it, it gives the drum so much more room to breathe so so um, yeah that's side chaining so I hope that I hope that was enlightening um, in the next part we're going to cover mixing down the track and then also uh, mastering as well. So if you come back in the next part, we'll get this track mixed down. If you like this course, why not head over to sonicacademy.com where we have hundreds of complete track builds in every genre imaginable, including all the project files and samples. You'll also find tutorials on plugins and synths, mixing and mastering, over 250 tech tips, artist interviews, along with our award-winning plugins, samples and preset packs.